Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Harmony Insights lunch date. My name is Eric Kershott. I'm the owner of Harmony Insights, a company that allows me to work with organizations and consultants using the DISC personality assessment. I'm also the founder of HR Hot Seat, an inclusive mastermind community of over 24 or 2,500 members in 10 different licensed chapters across the country. So if you are an HR professional or you serve HR professionals, we would love to have you involved at hrhotseat.com. Today, you are here for a Harmony Insights lunch date. And I started these a, a few weeks ago now to surround myself by people who inspire me. And that is, quite honestly, all of you. Um, but very specifically, it is for today's, conversa for today's conversation, Megan Newhouse, who is joining us from Inspirant Group. And uh, Megan, welcome to the lunch date. Hey, thanks, Eric. Uh, I see some familiar faces, so it's just bringing joy to me. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. This conversation is titled Knowing Yourself, Clarity in Isolation. And I went to Megan and I said, Megan, you are a new friend of mine. I would love to have you on a Harmony Insights lunch date, given our previous conversation, how easily we were able to, to converse with one another. What do you want to speak on? And she gave me this fantastic title, and uh, we're going to have a great conversation today about self-awareness and learning more about yourself, especially now in a time where we may have a little bit, uh, a little bit more room to do some, some um, introspecting, introspective work. So to get us kicked off, Megan, give our attendees today some context for who you are, uh, the business you are in, and what you are going to bring to this conversation today about self-awareness. Sure. Thanks, Eric. Thanks so much for having me again. Uh, Eric's right. We are new friends, but I feel like we had a half hour booked for our first time that we chatted and we went well over that. <laughs> just so easy and so fun you to, to do. to come back. <laughs> uh -huh. And so thank you so much for having me. And it's so fun to see some people that I know on here. And I think you guys know that I have no trouble talking about whatever's on my mind. Uh, there is no like work mag and home mag. You get just what you see is what you get. So I'm really excited to be here with all of you. And thanks to those of you I don't yet know, but I'm looking forward to getting to know here today. Uh, thanks for taking your lunch to be with us. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to explore this with you as well. And so I'm happy to share, as Eric said, uh, my thoughts on today, but I absolutely would love for this to be more interactive. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the chat. Um, hear from you, questions, all that. So I'm Meg Newhouse. Uh, I work for Inspirant Group. I'm one of the co-founders. Um, I wear three hats. So I'm a co-founder, I'm a managing partner, and I'm the chief people officer. And we can have another conversation about what each of those means. But um, Inspirant Group is uh, a consulting firm that was actually founded to disrupt consulting. So we're trying to do things differently. So those of you familiar with the bigger consulting firms, we're all recovering consultants from there. And we came together and wanted to create a new place where people loved to come to work. They loved the work that they did, loved the people they work with, the clients they work for. And um, we think that if you're going to be working, you should be enjoying it and be happy doing it. And so I have not regretted a day of this new job that I've been doing for about four years now. Um, but I, I think you know you're in the right place when even the tough stuff is fun. So um, I'm happy to be here. And I have done a lot of work in the self-awareness space personally, uh, but also through my time in learning and development. Um, I've also trained on um, self-awareness to leadership folks in different organizations. So it's definitely something that's near and dear to my heart. And uh, apparently, I've just learned you also have a very artistic side, as evidenced <laughs> by the uh, fantastic painting behind you. <laughs> yeah, when my husband and I were first married, which, my gosh, um, was 16 years ago, uh, this was a true test of our, our new relationship. Was <laughs> can, can we take some time and like paint together and make something together without killing each other? And it worked. And uh, yeah, I'm in my guest room. I, you know, it's one of those things I should flip the camera so you can see it. it's like a huge mess. It's a bed. <laughs> like it's the other side of this is ridiculous, but this looks great. So. <laughs> I've been Welcome. asking all of my guests, all of my lunch date guests, just very briefly to share a way in which um, they have been impacted by coronavirus. We all have to some extent. Um, and would you be willing to share some way in which you and or your team have been impacted by coronavirus? 
yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll jump in and get personal right away so you guys get to know me a little bit more and get a flavor of it and see what this conversation is going to be about today. Um, I didn't realize how much of an extrovert I truly am until I was unable to be around people. Now, I'm really fortunate. I'm happily married. I have two awesome kids. I love spending time with the people in my home, which I do count that as something fortunate. Um, I do, however, find that I get my energy level tanks about midday. And uh, so we're lucky we're doing this now because after the one o'clock I'm done. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, it's, and I think I never, I always thought I liked being around people and I, you know, people, it's fun and I like facilitating and I like being in front of a crowd, but I don't think it really hit me uh, how much that affects me and how I function until I no longer had that option. So not having that personal interaction, being around people. Those of you who know me on the call, like I, I touch you when I'm talking, which like being in charge of HR isn't the best thing, but like, you know, I'll like put an, a hand on you or I'll, you know, I'm a hugger, right? Um, so I, it, this, it's been challenging for me. So that definitely, and I feel like sometimes when that drop in energy hits, I'm just kind of going through the motions of the rest of my day, you know, just trying to get through there. I was just talking to Mary Beth, who's on our team, hi Mary Beth, earlier today. Um, that I do feel this is the first week that I think I was also kind of in a grieving process of what is happening in the world right now. And I do feel like maybe I've worked and working my way through those stages of grief and the fog has lifted a little bit this week. So um, that is, that is personally how I've been affected, you know, in, in my journey of self-awareness, I've had to really look at what those emotions are and, and figure out why those are happening to me right now. Yeah, you've, you've already mentioned one of those words that uh, kind of took me by surprise is really the grieving process. I knew I'd be disappointed not getting to do certain things and see certain people, but I didn't anticipate going into this that grief would be such um, such a component, the component, you know, such a strong emotion. So maybe yeah, I can... have I have, a, I have an HBR article I can share. I don't know if you all saw that, but it said that collective feeling that we're all experiencing right now, that's grief. <laughs> yeah. So there's, I thought it was fascinating and that really helped name it for me personally. Speaking of articles and resources, I'm going to follow up with all attendees of today's um, conversation via email with links to articles and resources that we talk about during our time together. So Meg will get those to me. I'll get those to you. Blind copy everybody. And then you'll be able to continue the conversation with her afterwards as well. Um, uh, Meg, if I may call you that, I have put together a, a quick poll for people, and it's a very simple one, and it says, how self-aware would you consider yourself to be? Very, I'm a work in progress, or I could use some help, exclamation point. <laughs> um, as people fill that out, you have already mentioned one of the words that really gets my attention. You said extrovert. And I do a lot of work, as you know, with uh, around introversion specifically, uh, networking. I, I call my, my session Network Like an Introvert. And I talk about misconceptions related to both introversion and extroversion. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about how you define uh, extroversion for yourself anyway, and the, the extent to which being extroverted plays into your sense of self? Absolutely. And Eric, you're probably more of an expert on this than me. So I would love for you to correct me if I interpret it wrong. Uh, to me, I always felt that the idea of an extrovert is one who receives their energy from being around other people. And an introvert is one whose energy is drained by being around other people. Um, and I'm married to an introvert. I'm married, if those of you familiar with the disc, I am like off the chart I and he's an off the chart C. So we are literally like the case of opposites attract. Uh, it's worked for all these years, you know, but he's, and again, I'm an extrovert. He's an introvert. He said like, he doesn't need the, all the people he wants to be around live in this home. And so he's perfectly fine with this. <laughs> I'm like, right. okay. Um, so, you know, um, I, I have always been this way. I have always been a people person my entire life. Uh, people have fascinated me. Um, my entire life, ever since I was a kid, I just always wanted to hear people's stories. I was always so interested in what made them tick, um, why they behaved the way they did. Even as a kid, I was like, I wonder why that person's be you know, behaving that way. Yeah. Um, and that led me to, I was a psych major in college just because I wanted to learn more about people. And I think that's probably what eventually led me to HR was I just find people fascinating. And I am truly interested in people's stories and in learning about where they came from and who they are and how they got to where they are and 
most importantly to me, why they behave the way they behave or why they think the way they think. Because I think we're all so different. You know, we might have even some similar experiences or shared experiences, but the way that we process them and the way that we um, react in them really has to do, I think, a lot with, you know, all of the different things that add up to make us who we are. I love that we have crossed paths. I mean, just as you're talking, you've, you've said like five things that we have in common between majoring in psychology, um, being in HR, being disc nerds. <laughs> the introversion extroversion thing is a little bit different. I'm, I'm much more on the introverted side of things, but the fact that we can talk about that I, and talk about it openly and honestly, I just love. Um, what do you think of my definition? Was that, is that close? I think, no, I think it's great. I think a lot of people, actually go a slightly different route, they'll say that, that people get their, that extroverts will get their energy from socializing and being around other people, and introverts will get their energy from being by themselves in isolation sometimes, alone with their thoughts, et cetera. So I like, I like your spin on it, how you, you talked in terms of what is happening with that energy, that extroverts are bringing it in by being with other people, and, and ex introverts are, are drained, their energy is, is drained by being around other people. And so the way I often tell it is, is extroverts are energy spenders and introverts are energy savers. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation like this. I can stand up in front of a group of 120 people and facilitate a workshop. But my focus leading up to that is how much energy do I have to save up in order to put myself in this situation? Because as soon as that clock starts ticking, it's going to be drained. And by the end of it, I, I will have loved the experience. I will have thought it was very worthwhile, but I am going to be drained and I'm going to need to then um, re-energize in some way. Whereas over the course of that maybe hour and a half workshop, the, the extrovert is perhaps filling their tank. <laughs> in, in I'm like that... buzzing. I'm like, what else can we do? All right, let's do it again. You know? <laughs> wants to go out for drinks. <laughs> right, <it's> totally, totally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, so we won't spend all day Chris, on that. But I... <laughs> <laughs> we won't spend all day on that. And again, I want to remind people, if you want to contribute in the, in the chat area, you're welcome to if you have um, comments, experiences to share about how you identify as being either more introverted, more extroverted. You want to share those in the chat area, you can. I'm going to end this poll and quickly share the results. Um, and it looks like about 27% of our audience feel that they're very self-aware. 60%, um, the largest chunk, thinks that they're a work in progress. And then 13%, a very brave and vulnerable 13% says, you know, I could use some help. And we appreciate your, your input there. I think we could all use some help, don't you think, Meg? <laughs> Absolutely. I have to tell you, I voted, Eric. <laughs> oh, good. You're in there. And I'm in the middle one. I would consider myself a constant work in progress. I don't think there's, I don't think self-awareness is a destination. I think it's definitely a journey. Oh, yes. hey, Jenny's friend. I love when little people pop in. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we love little people here. So, uh, Megan, so this has been a great, uh, uh, I've appreciated the, the stage that you have set and you've, you've shared some things about yourself that have been really helpful. What are some of the challenges that you think our audience is facing, especially today? Um, many of us are working from home, maybe that didn't before, and those of us who aren't, working from home are maybe deemed essential in some way that has us sort of running ragged in, in various ways that we're not used to, regardless of our, our current situation. What are some ways that you feel attendees are challenged these days when it comes to learning who they are and um, doing something with that information? Well, my gosh, I mean, with the pandemic, when you think of all of the things like adulting would bring, so I turned 40 last year and I remember sitting at dinner with some of my closest girlfriends and I being like an optimist and extrovert, like I was actually really like, you guys, the 40s are going to be tough. Like this is when stuff is going to start to happen. Like, you know, like things are going to, it's going to be really real. And like, Never in my wildest dreams did I picture a global pandemic when I would say, like, stuff's going to happen this decade, you know? So um, I hope all of you are healthy, that your loved ones are healthy, that you're staying safe. Um, but Eric, I think, I mean, in the current environment, this is just unprecedented for what we are dealing with um, every day, right? So if you aren't used to working from home and now you're working from home, what does that look like, you know? Um, are you, do you live alone and maybe you are an extrovert? So for the first time, you're totally isolated by yourself and you can't see the people that you like to go see. You can't get out socially. Um, you know, maybe 
you uh, are an introvert, so being home's great, but you need your space and you live with other people and you now no longer have that space that you once had. And yeah. um, you've got, you know, spouses and children and, you know, you're balancing all of these things. So I think um, even having, you know, a moment to be alone with yourself is really challenging. Or if you have that moment to be alone and you don't want that moment alone, that's really <laughs> challenging too. You know, I mean, there's no one right answer here, but um, I think that some of the distractions from self-awareness, even prior to the pandemic are, um, you know, it, it's really hard. I think we all have, and I, forgive me, because when I get really excited, I sometimes use bad words. So I, Jenny, I don't know if your little friend can hear us. or well, hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Like we all have our own shit, right? Everyone has shit from childhood, from relationships, from experiences, and everyone's different. And I wish, like, I, lo I would wish that I could like climb into someone else's brain for a day to see like, if their pain feels like my pain, if their, you know, memories feel like my memories if their um, experience feels like, my, right. Like I would just, cause we, we don't, we have no idea. People can try to explain to us, but you literally, you literally can never know what it feels like for another person. And so like even relating an experience, like, Oh, I lost my dad too. Like, you don't know what it feels like to them, what that loss feels like. Um, you can try to relate, but you'll, you'll literally never know what it feels like. But all of this shit is really hard to sit with, right? We would much rather be distracted from it. <laughs> it's so much easier to not deal with it um, and to just go about what we do and to do the things we do and not think about all that other stuff that happened. And I think that a big distractor of that is social media, mm -hmm. um, being a social person and, and being very grateful for it, for connection with people who don't live by me, for connection in this time. But my gosh, is it easy to tune out and not think about your own things and think about other people's things, right? Um, we've always had, you know, in my lifetime, I've always had the TV or movies or whatever. Like, there's just ways to like veg out and turn your brain off. So I think mm -hmm. that it's very easy to be distracted and it's very difficult to sit alone in your thoughts. But the way to truly find out who you are and what makes you tick is taking that time to be alone with your thoughts. I think that those distractions and uh, let me know if you agree with this on occasion can be a good thing. I mean, there are just times that, and, and I think you've actually been saying this as well, that there are times where probably those are very necessary where you just need to turn on the television or spend five or 10 minutes or more on social media and get lost in, in a sea of whatever, um, just yes. to get out of your own head. Yes. My fear then is that, 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 that continues and that becomes the, the norm, you know, that we get so used to these sorts of things, whether it's the, the television shows, the, the next thing that needs to be binged, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else. You know, what are we working we for? Are. We're working <laughs> our way through uh, the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt right now. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Anyway. <laughs> Spending a lot more time, though, watching television than I normally would. Certainly spending, as my iPhone tells me, certainly spending a lot more time in front of my screen than I was before any of this happened. And my fear as somebody who tends to be on the introspective side of things is that I will become less so that I will, I will almost fall prey to being told how I should be, or I will perceive that I should be certain ways because of how I see everybody else being. And I think in a time like this, where um, it is unprecedented in so many ways, we don't know how to be, there is no one right way to do it. Everybody's gonna come at it in different ways. And unless we know how we're uniquely wired, um, I think it could almost be dangerous, you know, in the sense that we are not acting with intention and with some amount of, of self-awareness that, that will be beneficial to us in the long run. Intention, I mean, that's the right word for that, you know, and. I feel like no one should care more about you than you, <laughs> which, you know, it might sound to some, it might sound selfish, but I, to me, it's not, I mean, who else is going to care more about you than you? I mean, you have one person that you're going to live with for your entire life. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. you. So, I mean, you gotta, you gotta get to know that person and, and like that person. And there's going to be stuff about yourself that you don't like. So you either accept it or you work to improve it, right? There's two choices there, but you can't ignore it. You really yeah. can't. So um, I'm with you. I mean, I think absolutely there is time for distraction, especially when there's pain like we're experiencing now, right? Like let's just 
numb out, veg out, whatever you want to call it, like just like let my mind go. But you're absolutely right. There's a limit to it. You have to be intentional about it. You have to be mindful about those decisions. And you also have to be intentional about, about finding that alone time with yourself. Um, I asked Eric before this, you guys, I was like, do, can I share some slides? Like the consultant I am. I was just going to set you up. Do you have a quote to share with us, Megan? So then he's like, well, you know, you never know about the bandwidth. And I was like, okay, cool. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go old school folks. Okay. So <laughs> look at Matt's face. <laughs> so, okay. Here's one. And I wish I, I attributed the quotes that I could, but look at me peeking around the side. Is that creepy? Um, we're all learning that how our life feels is much more important than how our life looks right now, I think. That speaks to me very much the social media thing, right? So, and you're never going to know how your life really feels unless you take a moment to sit in it, you know, and to just sit in it and to, and to reflect on, like, okay, here I'm going to go down this path. Um, we have had a disruption thrown at us. So if you are not one who likes change, which most of us aren't, change is hard. Even though like I'm a change management practitioner, we went from Google to Outlook at the beginning of this year and I was like the first one stomping my feet being like, well, this sucks. Like, I don't wanna do this. Bring me back my Google, you know? So like, <laughs> like do as I say, not as I do. Um, so, but so change is hard for everybody, right? So if you aren't one who like goes toward the change or the disruption, yikes, it's been thrown at us. There's literally nothing you can do. Life has been, life as we know it has been disrupted and changed. So why not, in this chaos, find the opportunity for clarity? Why not take the time now to examine those behaviors, those patterns, those triggers that set you off and ask yourself, why? Why do I do these things when I know they're not good for me? Why do I react this way to that person or that thing or that how somebody says that? Why do I do these things? And just be curious. You don't have to have the answer right now. But if you sit with yourself and ask yourself these questions, you're going to start to figure out how your life feels and the parts that don't feel so great, you can start to make some progress towards, well, why is it this way? And maybe you can start implementing small improvements every day. People think, people think changes have to be these huge things, but you just, you have to be patient. Nothing yeah. happens immediately, right? You don't lose 10 pounds overnight, right? You don't, I have a great story. I love magnolia trees. Do you guys have any magnolia trees by you? They're the early bloomers back in our neighborhood. My gosh, they come up and I am just like wide eyed. I'm like, they're so pretty. Cause it's like spring is coming. They're here and they're so beautiful. I had a magnolia bush planted last year, but it was planted late in the season. So it was all green. The, the flowers had not bloomed. My magnolia bush has not bloomed. And I'm like, well, maybe it's broken. Like they can get done. You know, what's happening here? Where, where are my blooms? You guys, it started blooming yesterday. So patience, right? If this is teaching me anything, it's that just wait and, and change is going to happen and it's going to be good. It's going, you are going to bloom, but it's not going to happen right away. And it comes with like small, consistent, deliberate, intentional choices. I love how Jessica has added in the comment section. I think our new challenge will be mediating and navigating our internal life, how to ride the waves of our emotion with some confidence and compassion. So she's, uh, you two are thinking exactly alike. Well, Jessica and I have talked before. So yes, I can see that. We, yeah, we definitely yeah. have So in the, uh, <laughs> I always say this, but this, this half hour is going by very quickly. In the, the few minutes that we have left, what are some very specific tips that you would have to share with our attendees? You've already talked about the, the value of getting to know yourself um, to, learn sort of how you're wired, what makes you tick, how you interact with other people, what you need from folks, and maybe how to communicate those needs to other people as you go. Mm -hmm. um, maybe something around emotional intelligence. What are a couple of things that our attendees can do today as soon as they're done with this conversation to move in that direction? Sure. Um, I would say take the time that's been given to you and, and find the positive in it and, and use that time to find yourself. Um, there are some things that you can use. So I think assessments are awesome. So you heard Eric and I talk about DISC, how we're such DISC nerds, but I'd say if you haven't taken DISC or the MBTI or um, Strengths Finder or any, right? Like if you need a little help being like, who am I? <laughs> some of these things can help, right? Oh, wow. And when you read them and they're actually, you're like, you you see something in it that you see in yourself. And you're like, oh, this is right. I get this. This makes sense to me. Um, you know, there's a bunch of books out there. Um, there is an EQ book. So EQ, Emotional Intelligence, um, has four different um, 
areas that you are tested on. So you can take an EQ test and one of them is self-awareness. And the cool thing about emotional intelligence is that that's something that you can always improve and you can always grow and work on. Um, there's Enneagram. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but that's another cool way to find out, you know, who you are, what makes you tick, talks about your strengths, talks about, you know, um, maybe some of your lesser appealing personality traits, which we all have, right? We're this way, but we're also this way. The stuff in the shadows, which we all have because we're humans and that's completely normal. You know, but I would say like, you can listen to all this stuff, you can read all this stuff, you can hear all this stuff. Um, but until you truly like figure yourself out, you're not gonna be able to apply the principles and the, and the teachings in the way that truly works best for you most effectively for you. So take it all in, read, listen to podcasts. I can share all this stuff, <laughs> but, um, and I can, you know, tell you who I read and who I listen to and who I find helpful. But really it's, once you know who you are, you can take all this in and observe it and say, okay, well that works for me, but that doesn't quite work for me. Or I get that, but you know, you, I, that doesn't sit well with me. And you can take those choices instead of soaking everything in a sponge and being like, this is what I think because this is what they think. You know, you just, you just take it in as um, information. I, I do have, so these are my takeaways. Um, let yourself think, identify mindless patterns and habits, apply an agile mindset, which is kind of small continuous improvements every day, have a vision and know that the journey there can vary. So if you fall off your path, try a different way and be patient like your magnolia trees, and then just be kind. Be kind to yourself. We're our own worst critics for sure. Be kind to yourself, and of course, be kind to others. I love it. I, Meg and I were talking earlier before we started today, and we could have had fancy slides and all this, and there's something about, about you holding up something that you've handwritten <laughs> in front of your webcam that I think is fantastic. Probably got people's attention in a much different way. <laughs> Ira says he loves the slides. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I would just add, you know, we've talked a lot about assessments and I, I can't say enough about this because you know, and they came out with a new Agile EQ assessment recently that talks about emotional intelligence and it's pretty fantastic. But I have personally benefited just from talking with, with loved ones, with people that I trust you know, to say, I feel like I have a sense of who I am, that I'm self-aware to some extent, but what's your perception? You know, what's your perspective? Are there th things that I may be blind to? Are there strengths that you perceive that I have that I would never have even considered? And getting other people's perspective, again, that you trust, hopefully, um, I have found just to be so valuable, even as an introvert who likes to sit alone with my own thoughts, maybe especially as an introvert, you know, being able to get out to other people and say, what do you think? And, and get that feedback and really sit with it and, and understand how it can make me a better person. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that's how, that's how people view you, right? We have a perception of who we are in our own heads, but it's always so good to hear from others and to, and to ask for that feedback, you know? Yeah. And, and I think once you have figured yourself out and you're okay with who you are, you can then receive difficult feedback a lot easier than you could have if you're not in that place yet, right? If you're getting feedback now and you get defensive and you get angry and you brush it off, then you're probably, you probably haven't fully figured yourself out yet because yeah. people who are, are sitting well with themselves are able to take that feedback in and be like, you know what? You're right. That I could do that better. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I work with a lot of people who jump a little bit, up, a little bit too far ahead and they want to connect with other people and learn about the world and all that before they first understand themselves. And so I appreciate that you've come on today to remind us the value of being introspective, um, building on your self-awareness, building on your emotional intelligence, such that you can then go out into the world and be more effective in whatever it is that you do. Uh, Megan, this has been a fantastic conversation. As I said in the beginning, I would love for people to stick around if you're able to. We can unmute ourselves and have a, an additional conversation. If you need to leave now to go about your, your afternoon, you're certainly welcome to. Hopefully you've gotten some value out of this conversation. If you have, I'd love for you to go back to harmonyinsights.com slash lunch dates. Register for some additional lunch dates that are coming up, including a couple that I'm really excited about. Next Friday, I'm doing a what I think is a completely new take on panel discussions. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that, but I, I haven't seen this done before. And it's, I'm like, now is the time to see if this is going to work. So that's uh, May 15th, a conversation around meaningful connection. The following Friday, I believe the 22nd, I'm going to be speaking with John Thurman, uh, a host of a co-host of the HR social hour, half hour podcast. 
which is a very popular uh, HR podcast out there. So I'm really excited to talk to John. In the meantime, Megan, thank you so much for coming on with us today and, and being a part of this discussion. I've really been inspired by what you've had to say. Thanks for letting me share my, my thoughts and opinions. You know, this is just based on my life experience and some, you know, really hard work I've had to do to, you know, get to where I am.